the next speaker on the panel, uh, Mr. Aiden Chetin, who is a professor at the Ghazi University of Technology in Turkey. And let us see if he can bring it all together for us. Hello, everybody. Today, uh, I think it's better to start to, uh, to talking with the question of Mr. Wadari was asking about the, what is the smart city. So, <coughs> actually, we are the engineers, and we talk about, uh, uh, we like to talk about the systems. We are uh, in, uh, educated in that way. So, we are, the, we have many talks about the systems, about the technology, about networks, grids, mobility management, and so on. But <coughs> also, we tend to solve problems or we are educated to solve problems. And while we are uh, solving those problems, we just uh, sometimes like to add some little words uh, into our solutions, or we like to use some adjectives, like smart, in the concept of cities or in the concept of any technologies or systems we are talking. I'm not sure uh, whether this is a concept, is a buzzword or what, uh, like in the smart cities, you know, uh, maybe the, this word is uh, injected into the, with the, some commercial uh, intention by the equipment vendors like uh, smart meeting companies, telecommunication operators, location services, and so on. <coughs> there are many uh, solutions already as uh, this perspective as the speakers uh, talked about. Uh, so uh, there are many people uh, also uh, thinking about solutions, about the smarter systems. One of the companies is IBM, uh, has been working with the smarter cities for a long time. And IBM defines smart city as a city as one that makes optimal use of all inter uh, interconnected information available today to better understand and control these operations and optimize the use of limited resources. So in the, this is actually a definition based on the efficiency, right? But the, that's the way we do it. We always have to consider the efficiency. Uh, starting from the uh, Galileo, we always deal with the complexity and uh, increase the efficiency of the systems we design and so on. In a general perspective, when we are talking about the systems, uh, we <coughs> use models. And uh, we use structural models, we use functional models, and we use dynamical models. And the third one is a very complicated one and a complex one. How to solve these problems or uh, with the smart cities, in the context of smart cities, <laughs> involves a dynamic parameter. Basla Shari, about seven years ago, made a publication and tried to uh, explain uh, the smart cities and the cognitive cities in this context. Uh, both Basla Shari and IBM also put the human in the center, as uh, SAP does uh, lately. Humans are the main concept, but uh, humans are also very dynamic and it's hard to predict. Uh, in a cognitive city, they call it, most uh, of especially, they call it the cognitive city, uh, where the citizen becomes an active element of urban, uh, urban governance, not only through its civic participation, but also through serving as a sensor for the operational state of the urban infrastructure. That's the one of the important keys. We were talking about the transportation, we were uh, talking about the water, we were talking about the energy, adding an adjective to it is like smart, but it's not only the concern, it's also concerned planning and management, and it's also mostly related to people. We can say then uh, smarter water, smarter public safety, we can talk about smarter transportation, smarter buildings, and smarter energy as IBM does. <coughs> We are very available tools today. More processors with the AI capability. Uh, if 
the we put the human or the uh, human beings in the or the citizens in the center, we are using or we are carrying all different sensors all the day with us, like the cell phones or they call so called smartphones. But lately, uh, like the Huawei's or uh, Qualcomm's and uh, Apple and so on, other technology Intel's, they have introduced a artificial intelligence capabilities to their sensors or their <coughs> chips. And uh, there are also some problems with, with the artificial intelligence and the amount of data to be processed in the systems. So we have <coughs> come across with the concept of the big data. Uh, big data, when we were, uh, started to talk about the big data, we were discussing four Vs of the big data at the initially. Uh, such as volume, velocity, variety, and veracity. Now we are discussing tenth of the Vs or about the big data. Like uh, they added value, variability, validity, volatility, vulnerability, visualization to all data. So as uh, yesterday Mr. Rahman uh, mentioned, now it's all about the data. So the, uh, to get, obtain the data, we need the sensors, and the sensors will be the third industrial, uh, industrial revolution, as I stated yesterday. That's the good point. That's a very important point because we need to <coughs> get data to make a system smarter because a smart system needs data to learn from uh, its environment. Otherwise, we cannot call a system like a smart or we cannot uh, say that it's more smarter or uh, whatever the description or intelligent or in other terms. But lately, uh, just last month, uh, for, uh, there were other uh, progresses in the technological progresses like a technology providers. <coughs> uh, IBM's uh, proposed nerve synaptic chips and uh, Northern University in the United States, they proposed multi-terminal MEM transistors and Alona computer, the MIT is offering. So <coughs> the computational facility is also changing uh, its direction lately. So if you go further, I think it's, uh, <coughs> I'm about to finish. All these complexities will arise new questions, new problems. <coughs> One of the problems, uh, it will, uh, like industrial force for, uh, for zero, uh, will some influences of the cities. And we do not know, we do cannot ca estimate how it will be, uh, affect our systems. Like in an India case, in a workforce of the uh, agricultural area, they will change. Uh, according to the late report of Monk, uh, McKinsey Global, uh, they say, they estimate that 15% of uh, workforce in the agricultural area just in India will lose their jobs or they have to transform their jobs. So in the, where they are going to do, probably they will move toward the urban area. So they will create additional problems. We cannot estimate that. But we have to figure out uh, what's coming on while uh, offering new solutions or new technologies. So in this respect, uh, I'll, if I summarize, uh, we see that all new equipment and devices will include more AI components in the near future. And <coughs> the use of smart sensors and human machine collaboration will be ele elevated and enabling more citizen involvement in management of the cities. And in this respect, uh, I just passed by one slide uh, with the autonomous systems and EVs will be uh, planning to inject it in the near future uh, into the cities by 2030. But in this time, new, new regulations and legislation should be adapted or improved based on real data obtained from the citizens. And based on that data, all technological advancements uh, should be for the good of society, for the good of citizens. Thank you.